we have taken upon ourselves to decide in the name of the whole group that we would agree to change the course of our life. But in those days, you had the feeling that you are not only entitled, but you are supposed to take decisions that might affect and influence the life of, of others. The year is 1945. The war in Europe is over and the world rejoices. But the plight of European Jews is not so joyous. Still stunned by the near eradication by the Nazi final solution, thousands of Jews are seeking refuge, the lure of the security of a Jewish homeland in Palestine driving them forward. But 250,000 are stranded in displaced persons camps throughout Europe. Despite the pressure of world opinion that 100,000 Jews be immediately granted entry to Palestine, a ban on immigration is rigidly enforced by the British mandate. Crowded rescue ships are turned away and 65,000 Jews languish in internment camps on Cyprus. The Arabs of the region fear and despise the notion of an influx of European Jews. Still seething that the British and the Jews put down their Arab revolt a few years earlier, they stew in anticipation of renewed hostilities. The Brits preside over a tinderbox that is threatening to ignite, and everyone in Palestine understands that armed conflict is inevitable. The British have confiscated arms and ammunition from all parties, but in conjunction with the ban on immigration, have succeeded in radicalizing and alienating the Jews. Understanding that a battle looms, and in the face of a shortage of ammunition, the Jewish underground military organization, the Haganah, embarks on a bold plan. It will build a munitions factory hidden right under the noses of the British on Kibbutz Hill. We want you to go and build a factory underneath the surface and to work in this factory in a very dangerous thing that is the creation of ammunition with powder and all that and to, to use as a cover to the factory. What does it mean to use as a cover? That when the British police will come, they will find the young kibbutz with youngsters, with boys, with cows and chicken and all that. We were Zionists, so that was understood that if something has to be done, it is done. In those days, the British were very strict about many things in the underground that we were doing, illegal immigration, but the most specific and the most dangerous thing from the point of view of the British was the production of, of ammunition and the production of arms. Because for everything else you would have gone to jail, I mean even for terrorist activity or whatever. But for the, for the production of arms and ammunition it could be death penalty and there has been death penalties by the British in those days. Even people from the Haganah were not told. It was one of the most uh, kept secrets of the Haganah prior to the, to, to, to the state of Israel. Thirty years later, when the rusty pivot on this old dryer was finally discovered, the cloak of secrecy was pushed aside and the activities of the Iolone munitions factory were finally revealed. At its peak, the factory was producing 40,000 bullets a day, 45 young adults toiling in two shifts underground. How did they keep it a secret from the British and from fellow kibbutzniks? Why did they risk their lives? What did kosher lipstick cases have to do with the process? And how did warm beer serve as an early warning system? We listen as survivors and witnesses recount their stories, and we are left to appreciate the courage, the cunning, and the commitment of teenagers who made the ammunition that made the struggle for Israeli independence their legacy. Uh, Yosef Avidar, in his memories again, says that these two million, <laughs> two and a quarter million of bullets uh, made 
possible the state of Israel? I tell you frankly, first of all, no one ever spoke to us before that about the, the, the future, about the creation of the state of Israel. All of a sudden, we became part of something which was much beyond of what we were doing and what we were thinking. Jerusalem.